Hi, I'm Bob. We will solve the exercises for the long run production today. In the long run, all inputs are variable. We use isoquant to illustrate the combinations of labor and capital that produce a given quantity of output. The slope of the isoquant is called the marginal rate of technical substitution. It tells us the ability of a firm to replace one input with another while holding output constant. We also learn the concept of elasticity of substitution. It shows how the input ratio changes as the slope of the isoquant changes. The relationship between the constant elasticity of substitution production function the linear production function, the fixed proportion production function, and the Cobb Douglas production function is discussed. Before we start the exercises for the long run production, we finish the last question for the short run production we haven't solved in the last video. Here is exercise 3.7. Based on the information in the application, Malthus and the Green Revolution. How did the average production of labor in corn production change over time? The average production of labor in corn production increases over time with the development of technology. The output of a U.S. farm worker today is more than double that of an average worker just 50 years ago. Malthus believed that with the fixed amount of land, the output of corn would experience diminishing marginal returns to labor eventually, so the average product of labor would decrease and result in massive starvation. This statement was based on the assumption that technology and other inputs are unchanged. However, in the past decades, we have seen substantial technological process. Farmers make greater use of other inputs such as fertilizers, capital, and superior seeds. The production function changes over time, and the marginal product of labor could rise indefinitely. Next, we jump to the long-run production. Let's solve exercise 4.1. What are the differences between an isoquant and an indifference curve? The isoquant shows all efficient combinations of labor and capital that produce a given level of output. The indifference curve shows all combinations or bundles of goods that give the consumer the same utility. The isoquant holds the quantity of output constant. The indifference curve holds the utility constant. They are similar in most properties, except that the outputs associated with isoquants have cardinal meanings while the utilities associated with difference curves have only ordinal properties. Let's find answers to exercise 4.2. Why must isoquants be thin? Suppose an isocorn is thick. We consider two pawns on the isoquant A and B. It costs more labor and capital for the firm to produce at pawn B than at pawn A. Since A and B are both on the same isoquant, they produce the same level of output. Pond B represents an inefficient production. It should not be part of the production function. So, 
Productive efficiency requires that isocorns must be thin. Let's go to exercise 4.3. Suppose that a firm has a fixed proportions production function in which one unit of output is produced using one worker and two units of capital. If the firm has an extra worker and no more capital, it still can produce only one unit of output. Similarly, one more unit of capital produces no extra output. In part A, draw the isocorns for this production function. The isocorns for a fixed proportion production function are right angles if we include inefficient production processes. The efficient points of production are the dots along the dotted straight line where the firm uses inputs in a fixed proportion of 1 over 2. In part B, draw the total product of labor, average product of labor, and marginal product of labor curves for this production function. Suppose capital is fixed at 10 units. We list the quantities of output as labor increases in the table. According to the values, we draw the total product of labor curve. Then we draw the marginal product of labor and the average product of labor curves. The marginal product of labor is the slope of the total product of labor curve. Suppose capital is fixed at 10 units. The marginal product of labor equals 1 up to 5 units of labor. It is zero after that. It is the blue line in the diagram. The average product of labor is the slope of the straight line that connects the origin to the points on the total product of labor curve. It equals one up to five units of labor and then drops gradually. It is the red curve in the diagram. Let's do exercise 4.4. To produce a book, Q equals 1, a firm uses one unit of paper, X equals 1, and the services of a printing press, Y equals 1. Draw an isocorn for this production process. Explain the reason for its shape. The fixed proportion production function is as follows. The isocorns are right angles if we include inefficient production processes. The efficient points of production are the dots along the 45 degree line, where the firm uses equal quantities of both inputs. Let's go to exercise 4.5. What is the production function if L and K are perfect substitutes and each unit of Q requires one unit of L or one unit of K or a combination of these inputs that equals 1? If the inputs are perfect substitutes, the production function is linear. Q equals L plus K. Let's solve exercise 4.6. The production function at the copy shop is Q equals 1000 times the minimum of L and 3K, where Q is the number of copies per hour, L is the number of workers, and K is the number of copy machines. In part A, draw the isocorns for this production function. The fixed proportion production function is Q equals 1000 times the minimum of L and 3K. The isocorns are right angles 
if we include inefficient production processes. The efficient points of production are the docks along the docked straight line, where the firm uses labor and capital in a fixed proportion of three to one. In Part B, draw the total product of labor, average product of labor, and marginal product of labor curves for this production function for some fixed level of capital. Suppose capital is fixed at two units. We list the quantities of output as labor increases. According to the table, we can draw the total product of labor curve when capital is fixed at two. It is an upward sloping straight line, up to six units of labor, and then it becomes a horizontal line. The corresponding marginal product of labor is the slope of the total product curve. It is horizontal at 1,000 up to six workers, and then becomes a horizontal line at zero. It is the blue line in the diagram. The average product of labor is the slope of the straight line that connects the origin and the points on the total product curve. It is a horizontal line at 1,000 up to 6 workers, and then it drops gradually. It is the red curve in the diagram. Let's find answers to exercise 4.7. At L equals 4 and K equals 4, the marginal product of labor is 2 and the marginal product of capital is 3. What is the marginal rate of technical substitution? The marginal rate of technical substitution is the slope of the isochron. It is the change in capital divided by the change in labor. It equals the negative of the ratio of the marginal product of labor to the marginal product of capital. It equals minus 2 over 3. Let's do exercise 4.8. Mark launders his white clothes using the production function Q equals B plus 0 0.5 times G, where B is the number of cups of Clorox bleach and G is the number of cups of generic bleach that is half as potent. Draw an isochron. What are the marginal product of B and G? What is the marginal rate of technical substitution at each point on an isochron? The linear production function is as follows. The marginal product of B is the marginal change in output as B increases by one unit, holding other inputs constant. It is 1. The marginal product of G is partial Q over partial G. It equals 1 over 2. The marginal rate of technical substitution is the slope of the isochrons. It equals the negative of the ratio of the marginal product of B to the marginal product of G. It is minus 2. It is the same at each point on the isochron. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.